Hello, I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today, we are having a conversation with our feature artist, actor, writer, director, and producer, Jahi Trotter. Hi, Jahi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We gave you a small introduction, but could you tell us about who you are and what you do in the Atlanta film and TV community? Uh, well, right now, I'm a filmmaker, uh, actor, um, writer, all the things you said. Um, currently working on a few scripts right now and just um, trying to get, you know, everything situated and get the ball rolling with, you know, our projects. Okay. So can you take us on your journey from how you started to where you are now? Wow. Um, so basically I started um, on YouTube, um, basically back in college. I saw a few YouTube videos and this was like 2012, I think, 2012 or 13. And um, I was getting a, a degree in social science, <laughs> and, uh, which had nothing to do with film. <laughs> but uh, I just fell in love with the camera and I, I really got into like shows like The Sopranos and other um, actors like James James Gandolfini and other few shows, and it really like interests me. And I've always been in love with film. I've always been in love with writing. I've been writing since I was like eight years old, and um, I just wanted to make some films with my friends, uh, little YouTube videos with my friends, and um, it came out. It turned out well. And then once I graduated, um, the degree I had, my social science degree, it was great, but it wasn't what I wanted to do and I realized that and um, I went back home to Mobile for Mobile Alabama for a few months like six months and then I told my parents hey I want to move back to Atlanta because I was originally born in Atlanta and I moved to Alabama when I was six and um, I just told them hey I want to go back to Atlanta um, I heard you know film is starting to boom in Atlanta it's like 2015 mm -hmm. and I was like hey I want to go and follow my dreams and they was very very supportive and um, I went to Atlanta, I went to a few schools, went through a few hurdles before I got to the school I wanted to go to, which was SCAD. But um, yeah, everything just kind of worked out um, around like 2018 and 19. And um, I started doing films and meeting other filmmakers and everything, that's how it all happened, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I forgot you were from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I know you said that you went to college and you majored in social sciences. And then somewhere you said that you always been interested in like writing. Um, so my next question is growing up, did your parents recognize your love of the arts? And if so, how did they oh, yeah. nourish your gift to facilitate growth? Yeah, uh, well, so acting kind of came about like seriously for me when once my father passed in 2019 and then uh, when my mother passed last year it really became uh of the forefront of what i what i love to do but, but um i can remember being in school plays um church plays and my mother would have me do my homework <laughs> and then after i do my homework for an hour she wanted me to go over my lines with her okay. and she would always tell me Make sure you, you know, express yourself. Make sure you, when you say it, you mean it. And she would have me there for an hour just in front of her. Little did I know, and little did she know um, where I'll be today. But um, yeah, yeah, that's how they really nurtured me. And they always were supportive. When I wrote my first book, um, 2015, my mother went to every person she knew at her job. Uh, my dad went out to all the family members and showed them my book. So they, they were always supportive of my dream. And uh, even though they was, you know, realistic at sometimes it was like, hey, you need to get a job, you need to do these things. But, <laughs> you know, they still were supportive because they always knew I was creative. And my mother used to always tell me that all the time, like, you're so creative. But like, I used to like, you know, paint my little, my little uh, wrestling um, belts and stuff and like have my own little wrestling thing going on with my friends and stuff around the neighborhood. And we would jump on the trampoline and we'd do a little wrestling stuff. And I, I'd create t-shirts for them and paint. It was, it looked horrible. But, you know, that would, you know, just be creative. I always be creative, like writing comic books and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really good. So your mom was like, probably couldn't be considered maybe like your first acting coach. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Little, she, she, it's funny because me and my um, high school sweetheart back in high school, we would always like go to, to the movies and she, my mother used to always say, you go to the movie so much, you look up, you're going to be in one one day. You keep doing this. 
<laughs> you know, so I didn't read it didn't register. But mm-hmm. um, it's it's funny now how that that's happening. Yeah, that's my you, forefront. Yeah, usually parents can see like yeah. what their like what their kids because you know, well, I don't really share this often, but I mean I like I love like I love clothes. It's pretty bad. But when <laughs> I, it started, I don't remember if my mom she was very fashion savvy, but mm-hmm. I remember taking some notebook paper and cutting it up like fringes. I mm-hmm. had the vest, I had the skirt, I had anklets, and I think I had bracelets. I tried to go outside with the outfit. And my mom was like, um, you need to, you might need to put something on under there. You know, I got mad, but you know, that was me expressing myself create creatively. But um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your both your parents too. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So we are going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we are talking with our featured artist, Jahi Trotter. Can you share with us about your production company, Spoiled Minds? Yeah, sure. Uh, So Spoiled Minds really started out with me making t-shirts back in college. I I came up with this idea because, you know, I'm an only child and my mother used to always tell me I'm spoiled, which, you know, (laughs) I am. Um, She would always tell me, you're just a spoiled child. And I always used to be like, well, I got to spoil my mind. You know, I used to just joke back with her. And um, I don't know, I just it just came as an idea to put on a shirt. Uh, my cousin, uh, my older cousin, Andre, um, Andre Lang, he had a T-shirt called Scratch, T-shirt company called Scratch in Mobile. And I was very, very supportive of that. Like he was somebody who I learned and saw what he did with his own um, clothing line. And uh, for me, I was like, okay, I'm in college. Um, I'm m- making these videos. And I'm like, you know, let's add some spice to it. Let's add some T-shirts to it. And me and my friend Cam um, came up with an idea to start making these designs for these t-shirts. And that's how that happened. And the whole school, like, you know, I don't know, like people in Mobile, people in, at Troy University, they, they all like supported me on it. And I really appreciated that. And um, after a while, I just started getting more to the art of filmmaking. And I was like, well, I want this to be more of a production company and do more filmmaking and, and, and more videos. And that's how, you know, that came about. And I've been just sticking with the name and took took a few breaks. I don't do the t-shirts no more, mm-hmm. but um, definitely um, love putting Spoil Minds Productions in anything that I do as far as filmmaking. Wow. You know what? I never knew you were the only child. That's news to me. Yeah. And that was when you answered my next question, where the name Spoil Minds come from, but you answered that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So you, you've written and directed a few projects. Can you talk about those and share with us what the inspiration behind those projects were? Uh, well, um, I, I guess I can go into the last two projects. Um, the last job, um, which was my thesis film for me to graduate from SCAD, uh, is a film about a young man basically who is um, trying to get revenge on this big boss who um, took advantage of his father, who actually had his father killed. And he's doing it in a sophisticated way by breaking into his you know, office and, and, and finding out files and putting them out there to the world, him and his crew. And um, that was pretty emotional for me because it was, for me, the last job, um, mm-hmm. like the title is, um, for SCAD. And it was a thing I promised my parents. I promised my parents I would finish. And they passed, unfortunately, they passed away before I could get started on the film. But they knew about it. I talked to them about it. And they were very supportive of it. And, um, you know, it was the last job. Just like Isaiah in the film was doing his last job for his father, I was doing his last job for my parents. And um, that's how that film came about. Uh, um, The other film, Knuckle, um, that was more of me just saying I want to do a fight film, a little short fight film. And uh, a friend of mine, um, Sid, uh, who goes to SCAD as well, he um, came up with the idea. We started writing and coming up with different uh, scenarios. 
I got friends from um, kickboxing class who never been in film before, who uh, agreed to you know do these stunts with me and do this this film with me. They really enjoyed themselves, and um, yeah, that that's how that came about. We shot that in one day. It was like a five minute oh. film, and um, yeah, it, it was it was really fun. My girlfriend helped out with it. Um, you know, a lot of people came through to just just to really just because of the arts. It really wasn't about painting or anything like that. It was really just creatively coming up with ideas and people who just love working with each other. And that's what was, you know, for me was um, very monumental for me because Knuckle right now and The Last Job are, you know, doing great as far as getting into film festivals. We recently just, me and my girlfriend went to New York last month because I got to a film festival in New York. So that, that, that's, that makes me feel good. And the fact that people, you know, feel are very happy and feel accomplished with something that, you know, we came together with. That, that to me, is the most important thing. Well, congratulations on it, making like the film festival circuit. That's that, yeah, that's definitely a, an accomplishment. I like seeing, you know, people that I know who have films like, you know, that make it big and make it to like film festival circuits because you never know what could happen. Right. You never know until you try, you never know. Right. So are you working on anything currently? Yes. Uh, so me and another friend of mine, um, Shelby Irene, she, um, we was working on this um, short film called Sentient. And uh, it's a sci-fi comedy, dark comedy, you know, film, short film. And um, we wrote that during the pandemic. And um, luckily for me, my friend Sid, again, uh, who's the director of that film as well, um, got involved with it as well with us. And we just came up with this idea. We shot that in August. And uh, hopefully we'll have it out sometime next next year. And um, there's about four of the scripts that I've written and working on with a few other directors that I'm trying to get done as well next year. Wow. So, yeah. And auditioning too. And, and, you know, still writing and still doing all the things I usually do. But, right. now I, but now I have people who I think are, you know, creatively supportive and, you know, want to see these things come into coming to light yeah and if it's anything that we can do you know yeah. we'll be more than happy to like share or like Thank have you. on our yeah so we are going yeah. to take a break but we'll be right back son i want you to always remember this when it comes to doing the right thing let nothing stop you sometimes you got to make our decisions you can break a rule or two but as long as it's good in your heart and you're doing the right thing let nothing stop. Okay? Welcome back. Today we are talking with our featured artist, Jahi Trotter. If I could travel back in time and interview 18-year-old Jahi and tell him all the things he'd become, what would you least likely believe to be true? Oh, wow. Acting. Acting. Like, I, I, I always looked at myself as like, you know, the um, more of a director, more of a writer. Mm -hmm. Acting kind of like just came out the blue. Like I said, it just, I lost my dad that August of 2019. And then I took a, 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 a acting class, which was just for, you know, just to get my credit, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, my professor, Adam Fristo, who is my mentor, who basically told me like, you should take this more seriously. This is something that you should do. You, you're, you're good at it. I, I don't believe, I didn't believe it, but you know, <laughs> after, you know, working with other students and getting in their films and, working with independent filmmakers and um, just hearing the positive feedback I got from it um, really helped me. And also, like I said, when my mother passed last year, like I just kept going, I just kept going. I couldn't stop. And acting was something that really was therapeutic and it still is therapeutic. Mm -hmm. um, that's something, it saved my life because I can let out a lot of emotions, whether it's happy, whether it's sad, because I feel all of those even to this day, I, you know, I'm still dealing with, you know, the loss of my parents. So it's something that 
really has changed my life, honestly, that I didn't think, you know, would. But I wear many hats. So I don't really like just say acting. But, right. Um, you know, so, but acting definitely is that one thing that really changed everything. Okay. Wow. So what is it about acting that gets you excited? Just, I can express myself, just the feeling and, and the fact that I can, you know, represent a character, but also at the same time, bring my own, my own, my own creative creativity into that mm -hmm. character. And, and I can, a lot of, and ironically, a lot of the character uh, roles I get are characters I really identify with. Oh, wow. Um, especially characters dealing with a lot of pain, a, a lot of struggle and uh, going through a lot. You know, those are characters that I can really tap into. Mm -hmm. And I just took an acting class um, called Emotional Access at Drama Inc. And that really helped me as well because it helped me deal with the fact of using what I've been going through and put those emotions into the character, but also finding a way to get out of that as soon as it's over. I think for me, when I first started out acting, I would put those emotions in and then it's hard for me to get out of it. I did a short film um, called Daymare, where ironically, the, the I played the father who had to deal with his son who came back to earth because mm -hmm. earth was dying. And the father wow. had to deal with his, his wife dying and he's at a grave site and he's crying. And a week before that, I was at my mother's grave site and I was crying and I was dealing with, so it, it was those emotions and also, you know, when they say cut, I'm still crying or I'm still, you know, dealing with the emotion. So I think that class helped me a lot for us, you know, learning how to separate that, like stay in this mo moment for a mm -hmm. while, what you need to stay it into. And then when it's over, it's over, you know, so, yeah. Okay. Um, so you recently attended our networking event at the mm -hmm. Vibrate Wine and Book Bar. Why do you think networking is an important factor to being successful in the Atlanta film and TV community? <sighs> because it just is. Um, that's something my professors told us at SCAD a lot. It's all about your connections. And, and the thing I think for me that I struggled with in the past was trying to connect with people who really are not interested mm -hmm. in feeling like that. They, they just more want to you know, help and do these other things. But that support system of people are connected with people who are into the same things you're into, who have the same passion that you have, who have the same creativity that you have, is is special, you know. And um, you can go a long way with just interacting with people and connecting with people who you know have your back. I've gotten roles from people that I didn't think would you know put my name out there to other directors and other people, you know, just to say, hey, I know this guy named Jahi who you know does this and does that, and that's very been very helpful for me. So, yeah, connection is very, very important. And I'm learning, still learning how important it is, you know. So, yeah, I would say it's very important. Thank you for sharing that. What mm -hmm. piece of advice would you have for a high school student looking to pursue a career in film and TV? Oh, man. Um, just just do it, man. Don't, don't listen to nobody. If you can't get it. My professor Quinn always said, and I know I keep going back to my professors, but they were very instrumental in me mm -hmm. being where I am today. My professor always told me the show must go on. Right. No matter what, the show must go on. And I, I apply that to a lot of what I deal with just in life in general. The show must go on. And I would tell anybody, you know, if you have a dream, if you want, whether it's filmmaking, writing, directing, producing, acting, you know, don't let anybody get in the way if something something always comes up if you find a struggle if you're struggling with trying to make a film or trying to do something something always come up it's always going to be hurdles in making that film it's all, every film i've done has always been hurt so make sure that you just stay consistent stay um, positive try to make sure that you you know stay content with the dream because the, a dream can take you far. And I'm learning that still, you know, I still have my doubts. I still have my, you know, negative thoughts and all that stuff. But I am learning to, you know, still stay focused on the dream because in the end, the outcome will be great. You right. Just stay, yeah. It's almost like telling a story, you know, you go yeah. come through all those hurdles and the goal is to make it to the climax or the end of the story. So 
Yeah. You only got one life. You only got one life. So you might as well just do it, you know? Right. I mean, no matter what, you know, people, I have people now that be like, man, you really do, doing it. I said, yeah, but you have no idea the hurdles I'm going through. Right. But at the same time, you know, I'm making, I'm getting it done because I only have one life to live. And that's something I've, you know, really have learned since my parents, from my parents, I know I keep going back to my parents, but really learned from my parents' passing is that you only got one life to live and you better do what you want to do because one day you're going to look up and it's, it's, it's going to be over. Right. You have to take advantage of your, you got to take advantage of your dreams. Take advantage of your dreams. Right. Yeah, that that's so true. So do you have any gems or words of wisdom you'd like to share with our readers and viewers? Um, hmm. I would say just try to, like I said before, just try to remain positive try to and like I said I am dealing with that myself I I deal with that all the time like I said if you talk to the Jahi three years ago it's a completely different person you know it, it took hurdles for me to get to where I am and I'm still going through those hurdles but just try to remain positive try to live out life the best way you can and try to make sure that you know that at the end of the day that you're happy with what you've done and don't try to have any regrets because at the end of the day, regrets are going to just keep you from going further and keep you from, you know, reaching those goals you want to reach. So I would say just, just try. I know it's hard, but try to remain positive and try to, you know, keep going and follow your dreams. Thank you for sharing that. How can people connect with you? Um. Well, uh, you can... I don't like really saying it like this because I feel like that's kind of like showing off. Like people can Google my name, um, mm -hmm. Jahi Makacho. Um, Instagram, I'm not always on Instagram no more. I kind of took a break from Instagram like that, but I'm on there a few times. Um, uh, Jahi underscore Mikai, M I N K A H, uh, is my Instagram. Um, yeah, and um, IMDb, Jahi Makacho. Yeah. I'm 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 there. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I understand the whole taking a break from social media. You can yeah, you got to. You got to. You got to. I I it was just too much going on and like, you know, it's just every time I look up you something ignorant or something bad happening. So I was like, you know, yeah, I'll take a break for a while. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for answering some questions for us. Mm -hmm. And Thank you for joining us. Be sure to stay tuned for more of our featured artist interviews. You can do so by subscribing to AtlantaFilmandTV.com. See you next time.